BBC Newcastle 20 to 11. Now, I use an electric cigarette sometimes. In fact, I've got it in my hand now, but I'm not smoking it. I'm just fiddling with it because I need something in my hand. Should electronic cigarettes be banned in public places? Some companies have already outlawed them. There's a, there's a pub group, right? Uh, Weatherspoons. And uh, they say the issue has been dis- uh, considered at the highest levels of the company. And they say that due to problems in monitoring e-cigs use, they've been banned because it seems some customers were trying to pass off their real cigs as electronic ones to trick staff. Here's Eddie Gershon from Weatherspoons. It's not a case of not liking them, but we ban them purely because they look like real cigarettes, which is obviously part of the attraction. In a busy pub, it's very difficult for managers and staff to actually see whether it's a real cigarette or one of these e-cigarettes. We don't want to be in a position where our staff are forever coming from behind the bar to police the situation. And there have been times where we've actually gone up and people have been using real cigarettes but trying to pass them off as one of these e-cigarettes. Well, OK, let me go into your bar. Man City have ruled against the use of e-cigs on their premises. Last month, somebody was handcuffed at uh, Man City and banned from the Etihad Stadium for using an e-cig. And though this bloke's suspension has now been lifted, the ban on cigs remains in place. And I think, I think, and I'm not sure, it's the same at St James's Park. So are bans like this fair, or are they cutting off a vital lifeline for people who seriously want to give up smoking and just need something in their hands to fiddle with, and when they've got a drink in front of them, you know, they need that something to draw on. Uh, David Dawn is in Sunderland. You describe yourself, I think, as the world's biggest e-cig fan. That's probably true, Jonathan, yes. Why? Um, Well, four years ago, um, one of the guys came into the, uh, the practice studios that I was running at the time, with what looked like a cigarette at the time. Um, and it turned out to be an electronic cigarette. I tried it, liked it, and I've never looked back since. It's all I use now. So um, you, you, you've you worked in the recording industry and you used to smoke real fags? Uh, yeah, 60 a day at the time. OK. Now, do you still smoke? I haven't had a, a real cigarette in almost four years. That's not to say I've quit, of course. I haven't. I'm still a smoker. But I use electronic cigarettes. I, I still get my nicotine fix. I, I, in fact, I've got all of the joys and none of the death. It's uh, a substitute for smoking and all a right. very effective one that's a, that's a lot better for you. All right. I mean, I, I, I mean, I think your kind of smoking is more called vaping, isn't it? Is because you and I have discussed it before. But you you run a website and a YouTube channel about vaping. Um, yes. uh, I, I, and why has that become such a thing? Well, I think people have realised that... Well, let's go back to basics. If nicotine had always been served in a, in a pretty mug with a frothy top and cinnamon sprinkles, we wouldn't be having this conversation now because the big enemy has got to be COPD and lung cancer and all of the other nasties that come from the smoke that the nicotine is carried in. The nicotine itself doesn't do any real harm. Uh, the Royal College of Physicians... Uh, the MHRA and various other bodies all acknowledge that nicotine and caffeine are basically a two sides of the, the same coin. Mm. Um, so, you know, sitting down and using an e-cig is, is probably no worse for you than having a, an espresso or a latte or, you know, but, other uh, coffee drinks exist. Are you really confident, though, that e-cigs or the, or the, or the bigger versions of the... Uh, I mean, you know, it looks like you're smoking a didgeridoo, to be honest, sometimes, but, I mean... <laughs> Are, are, are you confident that these things are not doing you any harm? Because there's research which goes one way and there's research which goes another way. Well, I can only go really by my own experience and the experience of those people that are close to me. Um, and going back five years, if, if we were doing a gig in, in somewhere like Steel's Club in Sunderland, I would get very little of the gear in up those flaming stairs and I'd have been out of breath and lying on my back and needing resuscitation just about. Um... Two years after I'd got into e-cigs, we'd get the whole lot in in 20 minutes. I was fitter, healthier, I could breathe better, I can smell better, I I taste things um, much better now, which, you know, it, it, is all good. Um, I My experience is there is no problem with e-cigs. So, um, as a super fan of them, can you understand why some places are banning them? No, I think it's laziness on behalf of Weatherspoons, I've got to be absolutely honest. Um... I do get that if you're using something that looks like a normal cigarette and it's got a red end on it, then, yes, you know, if you're short-sighted and you're busy, um, you might mistake it for a, a fag. 
But quite honestly, if it's got a blue LED on the end or a, a yellow LED or a green LED or whatever, I'm colourblind and I can tell the difference. Right, mine's got um, a green LED as I as I pull on it now. Uh, my producer doesn't think I should use it in front of guests, but it, it's not hurting anybody. Well, to, to me, it's it's you know it's no worse than uh, a pongy perfume or body odour or anything like that. I mean, it's not going to do anybody any harm. There's no secondhand smoke from it. There's none of the carcinogens that you would get from smoking tobacco or cigarettes or the second-hand smoke from cigarettes. It's not going to do anybody any any uh, danger at all. I can't see a problem with it. Well, ap- apparently it's not professional. Mm, well. she well, should- I, get, I can kind of get that, but if you go back to the old days, I used to go and say, yeah, Dr. Kelly, you need to have a pipe on or a couple of wood binds going while I was getting... Uh, getting vaccinated as a child. So hey, listen, listen, David, you and I remember working in studios where the ashtrays were brimming over. Um, do, do, you, do you think e-cigs make, smoke, make smoking look cool to kids in any way? I mean, you know, let's say you saw an eight-year-old um, pulling on an e-cig for whatever reason they might be. I don't think, it, no, I don't particularly think uh, uh, one that looks like a cigarette looks particularly cool. In fact, I think they look particularly silly. Uh, they look a bit like toys. The kind of stuff I use might have a cool factor to it because it's a bit more, as you said, like a didgeridoo or Doctor Who's sonic screwdriver. Mm. But even then, we're not talking about uh, an insignificant investment. I mean, the one I've got in my hand at the moment, I'm probably looking at 500 quid in total for everything I've got there. Mind you, um, it's probably the Rolls Royce of, of the gear that's out there. And no, I'm not going to name it. Um, no, I don't think there's a particularly a cool factor. But that said, you know, if, if, if I had a 15-year-old now uh, and she came in and she said, you know, I've, I've been smoking cigarettes, Dad, I'd be turning around and saying, well, here, have an e-cigarette because I know that's not going to kill you, whereas cigarettes but, very likely will. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the trouble is, though, you know, you're still ingesting something with an e-cig. And I don't know that this isn't killing me, even though we did a, a small amount of scientific research, because you don't know that long-term you're not going to get COPD from e-cigs or from vaping, do you? Well, we've got a pretty good idea. Um, you and I have both worked the same circuit in our times, and, and certainly as a sound engineer, I've been sat at the side of the stage with all of the, the stage hairs, you know, the, the fog machine. Mm. It's the same stuff. And I've had... I've been at gigs where there's been two gallons of the stuff pumped past my head. I've been breathing it in. And this is long before e cigs were uh, invented. And I must have breathed four or five times what I would get from e cigs mm. in and out. And, you know, I'm walking about and breathing at the moment and, and testament to the fact that these things work and work well. I mean, let's face it, anything that's going to get a 60 a day man, and I'd cut down from 100 a day, anything that's going to get a 60 a day man into, into not smoking cigarettes has got to be a good thing. There's no way can they be as bad for you as cigarettes purportedly are. Dave, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, David Dunn from Sunderland, uh, who is uh, is big in the vaping community. It's the next step on from uh, e-cigs. I mean, he said, you know, he was smoking 160, uh, not 160, but 100, and then 60 a day. And these things have weaned him off. So he made a pretty good defence of why he thinks it shouldn't be an issue if people smoke e-cigs. Weatherspoons aren't the only company to ban these electronic cigarettes. Man City fan was handcuffed, banned from the Etihad Stadium. I'm sure it happened at St James's Park, but I might be wrong. Some airlines have banned them too. <gasps> that would be the worst thing, wouldn't it? You're on a flight to Australia, you can't use it. Ah, Is it fair? Is it an infringement of liberty? Yes, it is. Should No. Should e-cigs be banned in public places? What do you think? We're talking about whether electronic cigarettes should be banned, just like the real ones. Uh, Some companies are already doing it. Martin Dockrell, he's head of policy for anti-smoking group Ash. You'd think they'd object to anything that contains nicotine and looks a lot like smoking, wouldn't you? But when I asked Martin this morning for his take on e-cigs, I was quite surprised by his response. Well, it's really important that you don't confuse uh, these products with real cigarettes. When you're smoking tobacco, uh, you're doing all sorts of uh, harm to yourself, but in this case, there's no tobacco and there's no smoke. They just aren't comparable. Should they be banned in public places? Well, some organisations uh, think they should. The British Medical Association, for example, thinks it should. Uh, we don't think so. Um, they certainly aren't covered by the existing law, and we brought that law in to protect people from secondhand smoke.
Well, there is no second-hand smoke from these products. Uh, there's nothing to protect people from. If they aren't harming anyone, is it fair to allow businesses to ban them? I mean, you know, there are stories of people being kicked out of pubs or football stadiums. Isn't that an overreaction? Well, now that's a judgment uh, for the owner of the premises to make. There are all sorts of things that uh, you might or might not be allowed to do in a particular environment. And that's you know, in the contract between the customer and uh, the landlord. But uh, as far as health is concerned, now we don't really see that there's a problem in these products. So uh, some health campaigners don't like them because they think they normalise smoking. So what, what's your view at Ash on that? Uh, you could take a view that you see people doing this thing that looks just like smoking and somehow that normalises smoking. Uh, but very quickly, when you see somebody using this, you, there's no, you can't smell any smoking. You realise that they're not smoking, they're replacing smoking. Uh, so you could equally argue what they're normalising is replacing smoking. It's just too early to say how this will play out in the, in the long term. I have a brother and a sister who both uh, smoke and they both have electronic cigarettes. Actually, my sister, she's pretty much replaced smoking entirely with uh, these things. So, yeah, great. Is she giving up, though? Well, she's giving up smoking, um, mm. and that's the important thing. She's carrying on uh, taking nicotine. But, you know, uh, if you wear a nicotine patch or you carry on chewing uh, nicotine gum, people don't doubt that you've given up smoking. They say, yeah, yeah, you've given up and well done to you. So, great. She still has the thing to occupy her hands. She still has the, um, uh, the nicotine, but she's not smoking. Now, a lot of smokers like these. And unlike other nicotine products that smokers really, I mean, I used to run quick groups and he'd struggle to get smokers to use enough nicotine. It's not the same with electronic cigarettes. Smokers like them. Martin Dockrell from Anti-Smoking Group. Ash, his sister, doing well on an e-cig and he seems to approve. 